Okay, we've made it all the way to episode number five. Um, back again last week. Obviously, we had the Colin Dredge interview, which um, we just kind of let run as a uh, an episode all by itself. I mean, some of the stories he had to tell me and Reese had a, a little bit of a reaction to that last week. But um, yeah, amazing, amazing stories. Um, great guy, and uh, you know we're lucky to have him around around the place. Um, got my co-host with me as always uh reggie how you doing mate yeah not too bad robin how are you um, doing um you sort of feeling okay you're in the presence of a um sort of radio celebrity now i mean you're not nervous yeah, you made the big time aren't you oh, mate i did i did I... Our, it's our plan coming together mate yeah well I, I mean i don't know if they give out a bafta for podcasts i suppose it's film and television what's the equivalent you know i don't know we're, we're down to we're bound to bound to pick up something oh, maybe this i year. should have thought so man um i thought it went all right that that radio interview <laughs> <laughs> we made the big time though well, well you did bbc radio somerset mate was it hard not to swear um well i never swear reese so it's <laughs> not difficult at all i mean that's sort of uh that's sort of your issue. Um, one week on from Colin's interview, uh, any sort of any little things that stick out from that? Just as a as a quick last last recap. Um, it's it's just still the the nicknames he had for all the all the big guns on it, like Boff and oh, it's quality man. He probably knows stuff about them that like <laughs> we know each other. Yeah, <laughs> probably. <laughs> Which maybe one day we'll get out of him. The semen of fruit. Anyway, <laughs> um, today, uh, today's episode, I don't know how many more we're going to do because uh, obviously we've been going for a while and I expect the people out there are getting a little bit bored of us. But um, but for today, we've got quite a fun one. So had another poll last week uh, and uh, we picked up enough votes to get uh, two more guests on board. Um, so we've got a bit of a QA and a and then we've got uh, we've got like a bit of a round table, if you like. We're going to be talking about some of our favorite moments in Froom shirts um Reggie's got a little something for us as well um, yeah. and then uh, and then obviously the question and answers which has been interesting uh <laughs> and uh I'll I think I'll start by bringing in um a regular contributor to that which is uh of course uh James from Froom as we know him um as Jimmer uh Jimmer you managed to burgle your way onto the podcast mate welcome welcome Hello, mate. You're right. Oh, and he's got there as well. I, I was convinced. Did it work? <laughs> yeah, mate. We got it. We got it. How does it feel to be on the show? Oh, I'm ecstatic. <laughs> How many Twitter so, accounts like, did that take you? The whole um, little chat at the start there. You just couldn't look at the screen. <laughs> no. Or was I putting you off? No, we should have thought about whether or not you should have video before we start this. <laughs> Took us a few goes to get going. Um, yeah, Reggie just mentioned there, Jim. How many fake Twitter accounts did you have to set up last week to um to get your name on this podcast? Yeah, I don't think there was a poll, mate. I reckon you just opened it, <laughs> closed it, Jim was in. Yeah, I don't know about what that. You've mate. been dreaming of, innit? Yeah, I suppose there'd be some disappointed uh, disappointed listeners out there, but <laughs> was yeah, there yeah. actually a poll? There was, mate. Yeah, there was I a didn't see poll. It. There's a poll. There was a whole 22 oh, votes, mate. You're not buying oh this, you Reg. Oh, my God, that is naughty. I'm happy Pardon? with that. You're not I'm buying this that. nonsense, are you? No, no, definitely not. He's got all his friends and family involved there, mate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jimmer, for the people out there, um, you know, keen to know how, you, how you've been getting on in the, in the last 10 weeks, what have you been up to? Oh, mate, I've been really busy. Like, works. I've never been so busy at work. It's been mental. I've been what? working in, like, nine shifts a week. What, what's that down to, do you reckon? Uh, our workload hasn't gone down, but due mm. to, obviously, social distancing and that, you can only have one person in a van. Right. So we've lost a load of blokes, but we still got the same, oh, it's just mental. Yeah. All right, well. a good day today, though, apart from that cup of tea, but, you know, <laughs> leave real, uh, <laughs> If anyone out there ever gets offered a cup of tea from James Unwin, just say no, we'll leave it at that. Um, yeah. Moving on, so we've got uh, we've got a second guest on uh, this week, and um, we're going to try our best to go a whole uh, episode without him talking us through the second team season because we've had <laughs> enough times. Um, vice chairman of the club, second team captain, 
and uh, and Jordy, uh, Ricky, welcome back to the show. Hi, lads, you all right? Yeah, not too bad, mate. Well, how uh, how you been keeping today? Um, I think we're up to the haircut stage now, and I'm trying to work out well how how best to go about that. I think so. I've... Don't um. Don't borrow any clippers off Reese would be my um, my advice because I said to him a couple of weeks ago, mate, I need to get this hair sorted. <laughs> oh, I've got some clippers for you. Don't worry about it. Um, and actually, I don't think that's how it went. Well, OK. Oh, Reggie, Reggie, you've got some clippers I can borrow. Mate. I, my hair is in desperate need of it. <laughs> well, either way, he gave me some clippers. I was like, cheers. He leaves them on the wall outside my house, obviously, social distancing observed. And uh, brought them in and just sort of clogging up the little, um, <laughs> blood, <laughs> these little, little sort of ginger hairs. Um, as we know, Reese's sort of hair is kind of blondish on his head. So it does sort of wonder where that came from. So, Ricky, my advice would be um, maybe just maybe just stick to the scissors, mate. To be honest. <laughs> I, mean, I got some no. as you can borrow, mate. Yeah, I think um, well, uh, I'm spoiled for choice, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll toss the coin at the end, and we'll see which way it goes. <laughs> One look at the gig. I think you should go for the top knot pots. To be honest, I think you grow out a little bit longer, mate. Get it up there, tie it mm. up. I think that look really well, nice. Do they open again in July? I'm wondering. I'm wondering if I can get another month out of it, but it doesn't look that long. <laughs> Oh, mate, it's the back. It doesn't. It looks all right in the front. It's the back. It's very. It's the face. <laughs> well, I, I can't do much with that with pair clippers, mate. But <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'll give it a month. I'll see. But very, it's very bushy at the back. <laughs> like uh, 1990s Chris Waddle. Um. So moving on, we've got. Uh, well, we're gonna sort of kind of open this up to the panel a little bit and see where it goes but the, the sort of rough idea of this episode was that we we're all gonna um sort of have a little discussion about some of the best things we've seen from Froome players in Froome games uh and uh you know we've got batting bowling uh fielding I guess uh well I suppose we we can we can start with the bowling side of things um Jim, uh, should we should we come to you first, mate? You, you kind of yeah. had to rack your brains. Obviously, you've been around the club for longer than any of us. Um, you must have seen some decent spells in your time. I mean, what kind of what kind of things stick out for you? Uh, if I'm honest, mate, I'm not very good at remembering things. <laughs> <laughs> good, bro. This is before your time, but. Uh, Ed Mill, it was like a privilege to build when he was bowling. He was class. Well, like the, the amount of times he used to beat the bat with the ball was, he was phenomenal. And his sledging was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> He's like the, like the most polite sledgers in the world. Brilliant. I did meet um, Ed Neal a couple of times. And I, I, actually, I actually did watch him bowl once, um, which was the ill-fated... Bridgewater away in 2016. Do you mm. play that game part for me? Yeah, yes, I did, mate. Yeah. That, that, was, that, that, was, that, was, me. that was sort of the, that was sort of the beginning <laughs> of the end for me. That I think with <laughs> first two. Credit. So uh, obviously blazing sunshine, Sparky wins the toss and fields, and Ed Neal. It's like game 16 of the season or something, and Sparky's wheeled Eddie Neal out from some. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I always heard he was, he was you know, he swung the ball well and, and sort of moved it around. Um, I guess. Um, if he was about, he would open the bowling with bars. <laughs> <laughs> has, he got bit, has he got a bit? Of... <laughs> oh, he's quicker than to save, mate. <laughs> oh, mate. What wow. Player. What a player. I like that, does he? <laughs> um, <laughs> Reggie, uh, what, what about you? I mean, obviously, you kind of... Uh, sort of led the attack for the last few years but you know what kind of what kind of uh, performances stick out for you i think i'm gonna throw it back to before the first thing i had it through to be honest rob and mm -hmm. it's gonna be it's gonna be one that you don't want to hear 
but it's all about the Neil Dredge 90 at Butley. I know you don't want to hear about the blokes batting, but what an innings that was. Oh, we're talking about bowling. Oh, yeah, oh we're talking about bowling, are we? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I've switched no, off no, there. No, I wasn't listening to you. No, 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 it's fine. If you don't want to bother listening, mate, we'll just go whichever way you want to go. Come on then, tell us about <laughs> Neil Dredge's 90 at Butley. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm, sure, I'm, I'm sure he bowled that day as well. <laughs> so we can talk about that as well if you want. <laughs> can you edit this part out? <sighs> nah, we're, we're natural, man. I could. It just let it, let it flow. End, it didn't go well, right? Uh, no. Listen, uh, it's, it rarely goes well anyway. I think if we get <laughs> out all the bad bits, then there'd be nothing left to listen to. <laughs> 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 Look, we're 10 minutes in and Reese hasn't spawned yet. So we're, we're on the right tracks. So come on then, come on then, Reggie. I mean, you know, we've all sat around uh, a campfire, you know, with uh, with Barky or whoever telling us about how Neil got ninety one day. To be honest, oh, I, I don't believe it. But if you wanna, if you wanna tell me it happened, then then tell me all about it. We we were in all sorts of trouble, mate. We were nine down, and um, were we nine down? Yeah, it must have been nine down with Neil back. And he just comes out with Danners' hero Honda bat, and he absolutely blazed it everywhere for about an hour, if that. Oh, un- unbelievable, man. Off about 32 balls, I think it was. <laughs> now, you can, you can believe what you want, but what a knock that was. <laughs> this is, this is, and this story is the reason why neil constantly comes out to bat at like you know seven or eight <laughs> when uh, you know we need a, need a few runs we'll, we'll get nails out there we're like oh it's a t20 we'll just shove him in at three i mean it's just you know like he's dying he's gonna dine out off that for the rest of his life uh, i mean he's definitely bowled some good spells um from a bowling point of view reese from a bowling point of view mm. hmm. wow I don't know. Bart Sparks has produced some very good spells, hasn't he? And we touched on it a few weeks ago when he was on. He doesn't really get the luck, does he, to be honest? No. So but, the, he, um, when you stand at slip to butt, he moves it both ways, like, consistently. Yeah. He, when he, sw- he doesn't swing it in the air very often. So he'll sort of come in and you'll see the seam sort of pointing pointing upright, you know, lovely when it leaves his hand, but it tends to sort of go after it, after it pitches a lot of the time. Yeah. It just gets that late sort of wobble. And I think um, a lot of the time he's just too good for the bats to nick it. Like, he hardly gets any nicks, does he? No. Um, you think you stand at first, I stand at second. You always think you're in the game a bit, don't you? But yeah. Uh, yeah. It just I, never seems to come. I think um, I remember his first, the first game he played, he turned up uh, to win to Nets in 2017. Um, no one had sort of heard of him before, really. No, no. Even Fred. And he bowled, like, he bowled really, really nice in the Nets. Um, but then, you know, a lot of guys do. You know, you sort of... Yeah. A lot of the time, you know, people coming in off 18, 19 yards or whatever, and they all sort of feel like good bowlers. But I remember, I remember he, didn't, he didn't bowl a bad ball for four weeks of Nets. Um, yeah. The first game we played was that game against Norton. And... So for you, Reggie, me and Bart, you know, obviously new to the first team and everything that surrounded that game, like sort of the emotion of it and everything, what with um, losing Mark a couple of weeks before. Yeah. And I, I'll always remember his, his bowling performance in that game because nobody knew who he was and it would have been easy to sort of for most just kind of fade into the background a little bit because, yeah. because of the occasion. And I remember Nick Pang him for a massive six into the front. <laughs> into the Chinese. Um, and then I think he cleaned him up a couple of balls later. He got five there. Yeah. Uh, Sparky was sort of sort of arming and ahhing about whether to put him in the side. And, and obviously after that, he, he never looked back. Um, no, yeah. I mean, Ricky, you, 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 I'm sure you've got a couple of um, things in mind. But obviously from a second team point of view, um, you've seen a lot of good bowling spells last season. Um, well, I was actually going to mention the first team one, if, if, if that's allowed. Absolutely, go. So I've, I've, I know I've got a lot, much smaller frame of reference than you two, but you, you can't beat Mark Watts seven for eight, surely. <laughs> um, hey, hey, I forgot about that. There, was that, there was that. there was that nonsense at the start where a few people let themselves down, and then it was just nice they, to see. They did, the you're right, in, you're right. Quiet, yeah. unassuming, let the ball do the talking, and <laughs> just bowled straight, mate. I, I don't know how he can top that. 
I think he lost his clothes that day as well, didn't he? In the middle well, of the square. Lot, there was a lot of nonsense that day, Rich. <laughs> I think so, <laughs> someone picked his clothes up and chucked them out of the changing room. I remember him running out butt naked to go pick him up. <laughs> Yeah, that was a that was a that was a weird day. That was that was the first day of our season. Potts, you managed to run out half of the guests on this podcast <laughs> <laughs> within the first twenty over. Yeah, seven or eight. I mean, four and four and four. I don't think I've ever seen that before. Um, and oh, all I forgot that. Yeah. Let's face it. It wasn't. It wasn't. You know, Brian Lara. He was bowling to, but you know, he just got it up there. And, and you know, to get it in the right place. You know, ball after ball after ball. Have you, I mean, Reggie, you, you took a couple of sevenfers last year, but have you ever, have you ever sort of, sort of got close to figures like that? No, no, absolutely not. I leaked too many runs with five wides down the leg side, mate. <laughs> <laughs> you love the five wide. <laughs> um, yeah, well, yeah, that, yeah. Obviously, that's um, that's right up there. I mean, um, you know, for me, I. I uh, if, you, if you push me on second team ones, I would say, yeah. I would say after in the first first half of the season was we've lost Ricky. That's a horrible picture, isn't it? We've lost Ricky. He's frozen. We'll uh, we'll, we'll come back to Pots in a minute. I, I, did you find it harder to think of a, a bowling performances than batting? Um. Yeah, but I think that's I think that's the way um, club cricket goes. To be honest, I mean, you the kind one, of... the one that stood out for me was Barks in the final. I thought he was outstanding in the, the like the situation of the game and everything. I thought he was the, one of the best I've ever seen. To be yeah. honest, in in terms to play of with. the occasion as well. Yeah, I mean, definitely. I think um, you know a lot a lot of people have kind of mentioned mentioned that spell. Um, you know, mine. I think just in terms of what we were faced with that day uh, last year away at Minehead, um, I will sort of embarrass Reggie a little bit um, with this one as I tend to do quite a lot because he's a decent cricketer. But, um, you know, the the pitch at Minehead last year was so flat and you know, they ended up getting 270-odd in a roundabout way <laughs> a couple of weeks ago. But um, that opening spell... After the first five balls, of course, Reg, when you got this <laughs> pump, <laughs> yeah, it was as, was as good as I've seen. Like pace, swing, bounce, uh, and I mean, you know, they just they didn't they didn't have an answer for it. Yeah, it was quick. It was a serious spell of bowling. Ricky, you're back with us now, are you? Yeah, can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, we lost you for a minute. Was it wasn't that boring? What we're saying was it? <laughs> well, yeah, but but that's not why I cut you off. Um, so obviously kind of bowling spells as you said Jim like, so it, sometimes it is a little bit easier to remember um, you know a, a good a good knock I, I don't know why that is I suppose um, I guess wickets you know I guess you can get a lot of cheap wickets can't you like a five yeah. third, you wouldn't remember as much as you'd remember a hundred I suppose in, in lots of ways um, but if we if we save if we save that for a little bit later, because um, I sort of I had a bit of, I had a bit of fun thinking about some of the the fielding performances. Um, mm -hmm. that I see. So if you guys will indulge me, um, I've got I've got a little bit of a list of some some highs and lows from from fielding, um, which I think well hopefully I, I mean pops pops his effort um, at forty five. Um, I can't. I can't remember. Oh, no. that was poor. Yeah. <laughs> was that Phil Castle away? That. Oh, yeah, Phil <laughs> Castle. So I, I was, I was bowling, and it was that <laughs> massive. That meathead guy with like the massive head and like the huge arms and like the sleeve tats and all that. It looked look like wax it miles, and and he just yeah. he, into the trees. And then the next one, I'd sort of thrown up a bit higher, and he's gone <laughs> underneath it. <laughs> that high, sort of turning around in circles. <laughs> you know, oh. fell over, the glasses fell off, the ball. <laughs> <laughs> just, 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 just a question. How how early on do you know if you're dropping a catch? Not <laughs> today, when that was a good 15 metres with my head. I <laughs> no way you're gonna 
even touch this. <laughs> so, I think, I think the, the worry is when you're watching someone else under a catch, you can always tell if they're going to catch it or not based on where their hands are. So if someone's like hands are out wide, you know, like, like this, like hands apart, like you're trying to catch a beach ball, that's always like a sign that he doesn't know where it is. If like he's got his hands together, you always feel a little bit more confident. Um, but is, I mean, is, that, is that what I did, was it? Yeah, mate, you were sort of turning around in circles with your sort of both both hands, like, you know, out wide. And I don't think you did touch it, did you? Oh, I think it was a two and a half minute. It hit the ground two and a half metres away from my old stand. <laughs> <laughs> I, hadn't, I hadn't moved for about 20 seconds while it was in the air. Oh, oh dear, dear, dear. That wasn't good, mate. That was comical, but I don't think it was as <laughs> funny as Sparky's. And bold. Oh yeah. I think How I think good. that was a week after, and I was so happy that had happened. <laughs> well, that was still in my memory. Yeah. I don't know what happened there. I, it was almost like it was almost too like it was it was coming too slow to sort of be able to like wrap your hands around it. But that was just absolutely horrendous. I mean, obviously- I'm pretty sure I got away with one the ball before because I was at short leg, and uh. <laughs> one just flicks off the edge and comes straight at me. I just didn't even move. No one said a word. And then, like the next ball, the same thing happened. It went straight to Sparky. He got oh. to it. Yeah, but it's funnier when it happens to Sparks, though, isn't it? I uh, I love watching you field, though, Jim. I love it. Yeah. There's I love a lot it. of bounce. Just he just he's like a little sort of little puppy, isn't he? Full of energy, yeah. bouncing yeah. around, sliding around. Um, Black, you know, like your black black nails. Oh, actually, I got a little question for you, James. Actually, this one. Yeah. Came, I, I know it's a little bit um, sort of randomly shoved in there, but uh, <laughs> I had a question from a listener who wanted to know where the inspiration came from for the number on your shirt. Um, <laughs> that was uh, Alex Bleakley's number, and uh, when he left, he said I could have it. Oh, so you so took it over. Inherited. Oh, no, um, no sort of other, no other meaning to it. Just you, just like that number. Oh, I can go into depth if you want. <laughs> no. <laughs> you Literally. said we're not allowed to swear. <laughs> no, you're not. Well done. You're doing really well so far as well, mate. Um, oh, I know. It's, yeah, come then. So, uh, so been swearing all day. Highlight. Yeah, I have, mate. Um, I, I messaged Reese earlier. I said I'm really worried about this swearing malarkey. <laughs> Hey, you're absolutely fine. You're absolutely fine. And to be honest, Reese is going to swear before you anyway, so it doesn't matter. I obviously gave him a pep talk, mate. Told him all I know, how to keep it in, <laughs> how to keep it under a lid, you know. Um, who remembers Isaac Woods' um, direct hit from mid on at the end of last season? Yeah, that was quite good. Oh yeah, that was nice. That was yeah. unbelievable. That was brilliant. Yeah. Actually, that that should have been in there in the bowling spell as well, really. I'd have. tell you another direct hit. Which I don't think you turn up because I think you had a bad finger, I think it was. Oh, I guess. Was it? Ash, Ash Britt always had a bad finger. Put two and two together, oh, I'd no, say you were long, taking. There's a long way to go, mate. Long way to yeah. go. Yeah. And uh, Ethan Cox on debut. Yeah. Direct hit from the boundary. Absolute beauty. That was naughty, wasn't it? That won us the game, third. pretty much. Yeah, because yeah, that was that was like a tight game, wasn't it, as well? Yeah, it was tight, yeah. Yeah, until I come on the ball. Put it right <laughs> out, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Banging it in. It's that yeah. femur they were worried about, mate. Yeah, that's it. Have it. The George Oven. <laughs> the flat one. Um, yeah, so there's there's two there's two bits of fielding um, that I wanted to mention as well from, um, from Fridge. Who... Uh, Fridge, well, Fridge, if you're listening, which, well, you probably are. He's probably listening, isn't he? Mm-hmm. Um, I, uh, I, <laughs> I do really miss um, kind of going out to bat with Fridge because you know I think we sort of we've got a decent understanding about how each other play, and um, <laughs> and he's a, he's a he's a good bloke to bat with, and we we've, we've made a bit of fun of him in the last couple of weeks about some of his fielding mm-hmm. displays. But there's two there's two bits of fielding. Um, Obviously, the uh, the catch, Ben Stokes' catch last year. Oh, oh that was amazing. Unreal. I mean, what a catch. I mean, I, I can't, I mean, other than the fact that it happened on TV about two days before, yeah. I can't think of anything better. 
It was unbelievable. It's just like an exact replica. Oh, let's be fair. He cocked it up, though. He comes flying in. <laughs> yeah, but so did Ben Stokes. But it's, and then it's... all of a sudden he's gone, oh, no. He made it look good. And then he just got absolutely taken out by everyone, didn't he? I remember sprinting over and like rugby tackling him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the game was like dead by that point, I think. Arthur had sort of come back on. He'd had a bit of a rough rough spell or whatever and, and then Fridge kind of helped him out with a with a with a brilliant catch. <laughs> there was another Potts, you might remember this one. Do you remember the um the last game of twenty sixteen, that game where where we were playing North Petherton, we had to win to stay up and it got rained out halfway through. Yeah yeah. yeah. And uh, we knew that we knew that we had to bowl them out before the rain to give ourselves a chance. Like the rain rules were stupid back then. It wasn't back with Lewis. So we knew if we bowled them out, we could potentially chase sort of 60 in about 16 overs or whatever. Um, and I remember Fridge fielding at deep cover, um, getting a direct hit from the boundary, like one stump to aim at um, to run out one of their batters, which sort of at the time felt like a felt like a huge moment. Obviously, it didn't work out. Um, yeah, he, he did this massive celebration, didn't he? So, <laughs> yeah, so the, the chest, yeah. chest went out. Well, I say the chest went out, the bones went out. <laughs> <laughs> but, Toothpick. <laughs> uh, he's, he's brilliant on that boundary, isn't he? You, Reggie, you and I were talking um, earlier today about the outfield um, yeah. a few years ago. And he, he, he looked after that little bump horrible outfield brilliantly didn't he yeah he did mate <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, has anyone else um got anything sort of sticks out like fielding fielding uh, well we're on fridge though mm-hmm. i remember when i start i literally just started playing for frooms and we had a game out uh glastonbury way it was glastonbury actually on their astro and like on this wicket there was just a massive hump in the middle so I'd never played for really for Froome before. So I grew up, I loved cricket and everything. This wasn't cricket, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> <laughs> All it, was, and everything. it was Fridge running in, aiming at this hump to try and hit this bloke with no lid on in the head. Fridge bowled nine overs flat out. Yeah. He hit him once, the bloke went down. <laughs> And then he carried on, and it was just bouncer after bouncer. Like, it was ridiculous. I bet he was bending his back. Whatsoever. We know but, he could get a bit angry. He gave Vila that massive send off, didn't he, down at Cheddar in 2017? Yeah, he deserved <laughs> it. That was plum, though, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, it was pretty straight, and Vila deserved it as well because he, he ruined that game. He did. He's so boring. You could argue we didn't need to bat on to 350. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Potentially could have declared a little I bit. went out to bat. He goes, Freddie goes, I hope you're not staying out here so I can get me 100. I go, No, mate, you're only on 60. <laughs> <laughs> He's been out there for 40 over. Um, so, the thing, I, the thing I vividly remember about that game as well, I think the groundsman locked the covers away. Yes, he did. Yeah. There wasn't any. Um, there wasn't like a lid on top of the covers, were there? I thought it was just like those two like skeletons. It wasn't like an actual like cover on top. Of no, them. they had sheets locked away, but these other oh. covers were like didn't even have wheels on them, did they? Yeah, it, uh, just locking the wing on the pub or something. Mm-hmm. Like the day. Just <laughs> no, he was umpiring. Was he? Oh, He's an umpire, isn't he, that groundsman? Oh, right. Um, so mm. what about um, what about batting then? What kind of what kind of sticks out? Should we start with you, Jim? Yeah, I was quite privileged to be batting at the other end of this when this guy did this. But um, Mark Dredd, bless him, but he uh, he hit the best hundred I've ever seen, hundred and fifty-five yet. Yeah. Who? And it was rapid. But Mark Dredge. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Go yeah, on. it was rapid as well, and I was batting with him. And there must have been about 15 bowling changes. Every time they brought on another <laughs> bowler, he's like, watch this bloke go over the rope. And he's just <laughs> teeing off. Every single ball teeing off. It was quite special, really. He um he had that sort of presence about him, didn't he, in the crease? Yeah. yeah. Big guy, you know, didn't wear a helmet. And he's like, you know, like with his like shaved head and broad shoulders, he sort of, you know, he felt like, you know, a little bit, um, intimidate. I mean, you you had you you put on about hundred or so with him, didn't you? Um, Potts, is it North Perra at home that season? Something like that. You guys both. Got... 
Um, I think you, that, yeah. The guy, I mean, the guy could really play. I, I, I did think a lot, you know, looking back on 2017, you know, with, with sort of what we achieved that year, you know, to think like, you know, Mark would have been batting five in that lineup all the way through. Uh, yeah. You know, he would have played every week. Um, and do you sort of wonder, you know, how things might have been, might have been different? But um, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, I remember that, that that was my debut, and I think Paul ran Sam Crook out first ball again, and then, <laughs> Shot. Uh, then, then Lorraine got him LBW, and it was yeah, th- that's harsh on Fridge because because <laughs> Sam that was Sam was like stood behind the umpire like sitting. <laughs> <laughs> right, that was <laughs> never been a great runner. Yeah, yeah Lorraine. I remember that was like that, that was like north for two, sort of four balls in the game, and I was like walking in nerves my first game and. Mark just sort of met me halfway and went, um, all right, mate, welcome to the club. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, not, it's not normally like this. <laughs> so, it was. Brilliantly after that. It seems to I be mean, like every week in 2016. I remember we, we played a game over Westbury. I reckon I was about 12 years old. They had quite a sharp lad who'd been an England net bowler. Mark Dredge goes, oh, I'll stay at this end. You got the other end against the other lad. And he literally stayed there for about nine overs. Just face this lad, see him off. I did, we didn't move. We didn't take a single or nothing. Are you still? Are you still scared of quick bowling, Reece? Yeah, I don't like fast bowling. Um, <laughs> Pots, what are you? Well, that I was. I was going through these. I think. I think all the great things the last few years I've managed to miss. So uh, mm. I miss. I miss your hundred at Bath. I miss. I missed Joe's 30 off the over, which would be that cup tie at Timsbury that time. Oh, yeah. yeah. So it, it's a. Yeah, if I, I don't want to be sounding like I'm blowing smoke up your arse, but pro- probably recent the final, I would say, is the, in terms of the pressure of the situation and all that, and the, just gut and determination to get the job done. That was, that was probably the best one, I would say. You've got to ration the nice things you say to me. <laughs> you. If you're yeah. going to say something nice, you've got to then say something sort of mean to even it out. I've got, I've got a few for later, mate. Don't worry. Because <laughs> <laughs> otherwise this would just be called the Reese Croker podcast. Because um, yeah. it tends to get quite a lot of the... Uh, quite a lot of the <laughs> so, I mean, if, if I'm allowed a non through one, I've, I've got to say that bloke from Burnham. From, um, but we sort of did him to death three weeks ago, didn't we? But... <laughs> well, Brad House... Right house, yeah. I mean, you, you, you do realise he's coming on in a minute. Oh, I, I don't know if it's the best, but it's, it's, like, it's definitely the one I've... It's definitely Special the one guest. I've thought about and talked most about. It was, he's, wait, he's, he's still a talking point of this day, isn't he? So it's got to be quite special. Well, you I've had ta- a nice chat with him, didn't you, Reg? Yeah, I've tapped him up on Twitter. He's coming on in a minute. <laughs> Potts' face is going to be a picture. How much did he say he wanted a game, Reese? Uh, not, not what we could afford, mate. No, We'd have to do another five podcast to pay for that. Was that a bag <laughs> of KP nuts? Is it? Yeah. Well, I, that. I'll see what I can't remember what he said to me now. Hang on, I'll just get the tweet. Out. He's an interesting, interesting bloke, isn't he? I, I saw you can't help but read his tweets and think he's being ironic, but then Josh sort of says, "Well, by the way, um, if you are out there now and you're a Twitter listener, uh, sorry, Twitter user, um, and you need a good follow, um, Brad House." Is an absolute belter. Have, have we got his? Have we got his Twitter handle? <laughs> hang on, hang on. There he is. There he is. Here we go. If you find his handle, you'll find his average. <laughs> we definitely will. He scores a lot of runs. That's what it says on the. Uh... Oh, I'm struggling to find it. Here we go. I got it. It's at House BCFC. He's a he's a big Bristol City fan. Yeah. At House BCF, BCFC, really, really good, um, good follow. That good one. follow, good follow. If you're, if you're a cricket fan, anyway. Um, and he charges. Yeah. You have got, a good 2019. He's got over 6,000 runs at 36. So that's... Yeah. <laughs> that. At Weppel. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, think, um, I think for me, I mean, there's been, there's been, you know, there's been lots of things that stick out. Um, you know, you mentioned Joe's knock at Timsbury, which changed the course of history a little bit because, yeah. you know, without that and the meltdown from their wiki keeper um, off the last <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> If anyone, if you haven't, if you don't know this story, 
we were playing in the first round away at Timsbury in 2017 of the um, Intermediate Cup. <laughs> and, uh, and we were chasing about 150 and we were nowhere. Joe got us, us like hit five sixes in an over, I think, to get us 30 off and over. We got close. Anyway, we needed three off the last ball and it was Watsy and Matt Knight, I think. Mm. <laughs> and what the chance of Watsy running a three are just so minimal. <laughs> Well, he's going to have to hit a boundary, but like, where is Watsy going to hit a boundary? I mean, the odds were stacked against us. And, um, and he sort of clothed one, like, just scuffed one, <laughs> out to long on. And all they had to do was just walk in, pick the ball up, because two wouldn't have been enough. We'd have lost on wickets. So they had walked in, picked the ball up, walked it to the stumps and says, thanks very much. But instead of that, they, they sort of panicked. And Watsy was like, so Matt Knight gets back for the two. What's he still halfway down the pitch? Towing his caravan. Yeah. And all they had to do was just hold on to the ball. Just hold on to the ball. That's it. Game over. But the keeper, like a rush of blood, <laughs> tries, tries at the stumps and misses. And Matt Knight comes back for the three. And uh, we ended up sneaking home. But like, that, knock, that knock from Joe was good. Um, and obviously Sam played a couple of beauties. Um last season I think for me coming over from um, Bath the sort of environment that we uh, played in over there we went into pretty much every game we played knowing we were the best team and we'd expect to win from any situation and so quite a lot of the time you know you'd find yourselves needing 60 or 70 with two wickets left but you'd always feel like you had a chance because you had just a little bit of an edge like psychological edge maybe over the other team and um, when we started at Froome in 2017, we, we'd had such a poor year the season before that we didn't really have that, that edge. Um, and then there was two innings that in my head just changed that and made me sort of think, actually, you know, we can, we can win any game of cricket. We do have that little bit extra than everyone else. Um, and it was the game, it was, it was the 75 not out um, from Reese against Cheddar. And then 83 not out from, from Reggie as well against Ash Brittle. Both, both games chasing um, at the time were big games. Like, so the Cheddar game was the second game of the season. We hadn't sort of found our feet. The Ash Brittle game was the game we went top of the league for the first time at the halfway stage. Um, and in both games, it felt like we were buried and needed something special. Um, and in the Cheddar game, I think you batted with Smithy. Who, who batted really, really well. Yeah. Ash Brittle game with uh, Jimmer. And, um, you know, both times, you know, that those two partnerships for me, I think uh, just sort of underlined that we were the best team in the league that year. And I think it gave us the belief going forward that actually, you know, we, we know that we've got enough. Um, and uh, I think that was sort of big for us as a club, you know, going forward. Yeah, sometimes you need some wins like that just to change the whole mentality of the club, don't you? But you need to find, things. find out about yourselves when things are difficult because it's all very well and good, you know, scoring 300 and then bowling teams out for one point. You yeah. don't find much out about yourselves. It's when, you, it's when you get into scrapes and sticky situations that you realise who the really important players in your team are because they're, they're the ones who, who don't sort of... You know, when you play, when you play um, sport at any level, I think there's some people that just have... Just have a little bit of an industry and there are some people that, that just don't and it doesn't mean they're bad cricketers it just means that you know when you look at their achievements they tend to be in games where you know there's not a lot of pressure on you know you might you know someone gets a brilliant 200 out of 350 for five or whatever is not as significant as someone getting 75 not out in a tight run chase um, and I think we found out a lot about the makeup of our squad in, in those two games. Uh, Reggie, what about you? Um, I mean, you've You're had a back to now. <laughs> oh, actually, no, I, actually, I forgot one. No, you did say that because I didn't see the knock at Butley. I think <laughs> the only time I've seen Neil get double figures <laughs> was, was 2016 away at Chard. Disaster of a game. They got 250. Neil walks out at 65 for nine. And gets gets at a blistering thirty five. I mean, he almost took us to one batting point, which you know, <laughs> twenty sixteen they were pretty hard to come by. 
um, hit about five sixes. And I thought that was the reason why he always bats like eight or nine. But apparently it was apparently it was Butley. Um, so yeah, I love watching him bat, see? I think it's really entertaining. Well, because you, you, you can, like, it's... Will he get out first ball or not? But what I don't understand is that sometimes... Sometimes he'll go out and the first ball, no matter where it is, he's trying to hit it over the pavilion for six. <laughs> He, he then, told me why, actually. And then he might, he might like, and then next week, we might go for like a sweep. Just like a random sweep. Sweep. And then occasionally he'll just like leave one. <laughs> he, 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 he played a twos game at Long Sutton when, I think, well, I think he missed a few, he, he came down. And it was a low run chase, but like it, was, it was quite a tricky wicket. And he, 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 was, he came in at seven, and he, as he was walking out, I said, like, watch out a bit. The bounce is, like, a bit low, sort of get your eye in. And as you say, he just hit the first one out of the ground, first ball. And then, like, patted out, then patted out the rest of the over. And, like, I, I walked out and chat to him in the middle, and I said, uh, well, well done, Neil, but, like, got to dig in here. Like, it's not the easiest. He said, yeah, yeah, sorry, mate. I am. Um, I always find if I can hit the first one out of the ground, it calms me down a bit. And that's just, like, really a problem in it after that. He's in. He's in. And he, he, so he, he like he played properly after that, and like sort of won us the game. It was like, yeah, just get that first one out the ground, and then you sort of settle down for the rest. Great bloke, isn't he? Great bloke. <laughs> Reggie, I've, I think the best innings I've seen, and I'm not blowing smoke up your ass because I wouldn't want to do that, Letty, but is the one against North Pether and at home this year. Oh, that was. Oh, I thought you were going bar. No, absolutely soaking wet the wicket. I don't know what the hell Hambles did to it, but it was wet. And I just remember. I don't think that was Hambles' fault. In fairness, I think it just <laughs> came down. Right. Yeah, but he could have put the covers on on Wednesday. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. We turned up to training, and it was hosing it down, and the covers were just sat over by the side of it. By the, by, the, by the cage. Yeah, but I just I remember that innings, and it was they were banging it in sort of like halfway down decent length. There was just one was coming round by your ankles, and the next one was up round your ears, wasn't it? Yeah. I, I don't know how many you got. How many did you get that day? Was a seventy old one, eighty old. About eighty, yeah. yeah. I, I think I think the thing about that day was. It was such a slow, stoppy wicket. Yeah. And it was, it was just, all, it was like every time the ball landed, it left like a little, like a little crater in the middle. Yeah, yeah. Where, and every batter that came out <laughs> kept playing cross bat shots. And like every batter, uh, came out, I just said, look, don't cut, don't pull, just play with a straight bat because like you can't. Uh-huh. It's just like it's, it's random. You don't know. And poor Tim Leonard came out for his like, first team like Davy that year, and it just, it was just like popping and stopping. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that, yeah, that was, yeah, that was. Uh, no, I think that I was a serious knock. Like, I've I come out and you, all you said to me that was, Gemma, I know you like it, just don't sweep, don't sweep, it's popping, <laughs> it's staying low, yeah. don't sweep, don't sweep. As he started running in with the ball, I was thinking, don't sweep, don't sweep, 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 <laughs> sweep. <laughs> <laughs> cut, cut, cut. <laughs> I was getting so eggy at the non-strikers end, because I, like, you know, everyone came out and they all went back doing the exact same thing. Just like going for these like chops and cuts and pull. Like, what are you doing? I think Bart's like Bart's came out and he did the same. And then it was left with sort of Watsy. And um, you know, bless him. The best thing Watsy did that day was just miss every ball he faced because they kept sort of bowling outside off, but he couldn't, couldn't get back on it. But no, I think I think that was a serious knock though because oh, I agree. And you're the, you're the only one that day that I think even got in the double figures. I think. I think um, from both I sides. Think, I think we ended up with about 130, didn't we? Which, but we knew, but we knew that yeah, we, was, yeah. was yeah. You know, easily going to be plenty. I think we thought like, I, I remember when Bart's came out and it was, I think we were about 80 for six or seven or something. And I did say to him like, if we if we get 110 here, we, we've got enough. Like, so yeah, just, uh, you know, dig in. Yeah, I think yeah. we had, bought them out quite cheap in the end, didn't we? But the joys of playing at three, mate. <laughs> <laughs> that brings me on. To, that brings me on to a question that I've been sent actually. Oh, the got... same game that we mopped up the wicket with t-shirts. Yeah, yeah, that's one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get the game on. 
Yeah. I, I reckon I'd turn up in the ground at half past six. Yeah. I was there at half past six in the morning. But I, you know, do you know what? I think that's something that um, that's something that's changed at the club in my time is because I, I think in the first year that we were that I was here in 2016, that never would have happened. The players would have turned up at normal time and probably moaned about the wicket not being good enough, and then and then we wouldn't have played a game. Whereas I, I can, there's so many times, ones, twos, threes, whoever it is, like people turn up and help out, like the yeah. day before if there's a twos game and it needs the sheets putting on, then first team players have gone down to sort the wicket out. And I think that's something that's that's been great to see over the last over the last couple of years. Um, you got a question for us, Reg? Yeah, I did get sent a question in. I just got to find it. Hang on. <laughs> Has anyone ever seen a wicket at Froome CC that isn't green? No. That's from Sam C in Froome. Even the even the artificials are green, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I, I honestly can't. But so what I would say in in the defence of groundsman is that <laughs> what was quite funny is is in the summer of 2018 when our outfield was like brown and the wicket was still like, like <laughs> green green with grass on it. But I didn't know anything about preparing whatsoever. All I could say is what other wickets look like and what ours look like. <laughs> but what I would say is once you've played 20 overs on any wicket that Ambrose prepares, the wicket is perfectly fine. Like it doesn't, it doesn't misbehave, it doesn't do anything really. It's pretty flat. Yeah. It's always, it's always like the first 20 overs is always different. And after that, it's a, it's a pretty good wicket. Yeah, I was going to say, I think we all turn up and we all have a joke about it, don't we? Like, oh, it's God's sake. But... I don't think we've ever played on a bad one apart from that day against Peveron, but I think it, that was it, wet. I think it wins us a lot of games as well, mate, because I think yeah. teams turn up and think, oh, this is a bit green, we better stick him in. Yeah. Whereas actually he kind of suits us because like, you know, we know we know how it we know how it plays and we like to bat first. Um so yeah. If we bowl if we bowl first, it suits our medium pacers, doesn't it? Yeah, well we've got yeah. plenty of those, mate. Well, I suppose what we what we really need is a, is a <laughs> app now quick, but you know, that's, yeah. That's, we're looking for if you could take one team strip, who would you take? Minehead. Minehead. Uh, oh. North Parrot. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, North Parrot. Yeah, decent. Yeah, yeah. I'd go North Parrot. I, I tell you why North Parrot wins because they got a balcony as well. I like a balcony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Always good to watch from a balcony. Bath boy in it likes a balcony. Yeah, mate. Oh. Like a balcony. It's nice, nice little sun trap if you if you buy mm. Stacey balls up in the air and you can always get your shirt off and catch some sun. Half tracker from a bird. <laughs> what have you? Uh... <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> what, have, what have you got for us this week, Reggie? What's what's happening in Reggie's corner? Reggie's corner. Mm. Okay. So I've done a bit of research. I've uh, got in touch with the boys earlier on. So I've got three questions each. So, Potts, I'll ask you three questions first about Jimmer. Wait, what, what is this, like a Mr. and Mrs.? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I like it. First team, first team captain and first, uh, sorry, second team captain and second team vice captain. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, You've got it, Rob. You've got it. Well, didn't it Mark? I, I like it. <laughs> yeah, that captain, vice captain thing went well. <laughs> yeah, yeah don't think they've ever played a game together yeah, as I think, captain and vice captain. I think we had that annulled, mate. You know, <laughs> <laughs> the drinks for pre-season were worth it though. It was, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did he pay? No. Tight said that's but ass like Richie Metcalf. <laughs> Go right. on, mate. Try it. What is James Unwin's highest score, Ricky? Oh, Ever. This one? Ever. Definitely three figures. Yeah. I'm going to go 118. Ooh. Do you want to have another go? Can I one more go? Us? Hang on, hang on, hang on. One more go. Higher, can I have a gas go higher or lower? Or? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 119. No, wrong, 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 wrong. Okay, Robin. Well, I, I don't, I, I'm pretty sure you got exactly 100 last season. And I... 
I reckon that was your first 100, so I'm going to go with exactly 100. No. Oh. It's 127. Oh, Jimmer. Oh, and, and there is a hashtag that goes with it, but I don't th- think I better mention that one. <laughs> <laughs> Good try again, Jim. Uh, genuinely on that one, Reese asked me earlier and I got it wrong. <laughs> what, what he sent me. Say? He sent me 126 first. Oh, <laughs> Read the hashtag. No, no, I can't. I can't. <laughs> okay, pot. Second question. You've got zero points. If Jimmer could have anyone in the club neck a pint for him, if his life depended on it, who would it be? Neck a pint. Yeah. Right. Not me. Not Tim Leonard. Not Josh. I'm trying to judge his face I'm saying these. Um, it's got to be Vila. Got to be Vila. Ah. Uh-huh. One from two. Very good. Yes, Ricky. Nice. Okay. Now, this is, this is a true or false for the last question, Pot. Is it true or false that Jimmer, in his lifetime, has pissed on someone's leg in a shower? Oh, it, come on, man. Yes, because... <laughs> was it me? It. Yes, I'm pretty sure it was me. Read these questions first. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it down. 51, 51 minutes. Yeah, so, I've, I've, I've got to be honest, mate. That was quite an easy last one. To be fair. <laughs> I think that there is a story to go with that as well, but that's not. <laughs> we don't. Need no, to. it's not. It's not that bad actually. It's where he's actually. Um, <laughs> he says the he says the best moment he's had in the shower was with Cy Edwards. He was washing his butthole. No! Please. And he was squirting shower gel up his back. And Gullet walked in and just said, F this. And, and Jim doesn't know why. Um, <laughs> that was very well not a swear there, mate. Yeah. Uh-huh. Boys and girls. Obviously, we lost that show. I'm sure there's um, a lot of the youth of Froom CC listening to us at the moment. I can only apologise for what you just heard. Um, yeah, sorry about that. Is the second half, girl, the second half as bad as the first half, Reese? No, no, it should get better now. Okay. This is this is parts of it. It's quite normal. Okay, so same question for you, Gemma. What's uh, Potts' highest score? Bonus point for if you can tell me who it was against. Was it for Froome? Yeah. I reckon I know this one as well. I reckon 100 and... I reckon it's the one he hit one at the tree. 100 and... Bonus point for that, mate. 120. (laughs) I reckon I I know this one. Go on, Rob. I'm going to go 1-3-0, not out. Yeah. Can you tell me who against? Uh, but it would have been for the twos in 2016, so that would have been against like Lyon Mendit fourths or something. No, it was either Curry Rivel or Rival. Oh, you're never against that. <laughs> and apparently, he said they did only have 10, but he told me not to mention that. <laughs> it's good 10, though. Oh, it's a big six, mate. No, mate, you can have as many fields as you can. Went up a tree. We're playing right. youth wicket on the other side. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right, my next question for you, James, is if Potts had to take one person to China Capital on a Saturday evening, who would it be? John Dredge. Oh, that was easy. <laughs> Number four, two four, 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 four. in his chow mein. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Was it JD? We're chewing on that for about five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> there was JD. Yeah. <laughs> That, that was, was pretty. Well. Chicken balls. Good. Right, so, um, question and, and this is my. This is a true or false. Is it true or false that Richard Potter at my barbecue last at the end of last summer drank ouzo straight from the bottle and downed it? That's a false. It's got to be false. It's gotta it be. is. That's it, it is. It is false. He did drink from the bottle, but he did not finish it, did you, Potts? I don't remember that at all, mate, which makes me think so. 
But you did also drink a three liter bottle of uh, what white was it? it was, yeah, white lightning. I, 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 I just I just remember it was one pound ninety nine, about five liters of it. That's cost cutters, cost cutters, wasn't it? Do you know what to take the one at Reg's party? <laughs> <laughs> was that when we were all outside the barbecue and Lenny was watching the cricket indoors on his own? Yeah, that's the one. That's the one, yeah. And then he... And then he was, it was, it was, it was, uh, was that Northampton against Leicestershire or something? And yeah. then he went home early, didn't he? Because he's boring and can't, can't keep up with the pace of us. Yeah. But he won't go home early anymore because he only lives over the road, so... Doesn't mean anyway, that's my section over, Rob. Right, thanks, Reese. That was that was really nice. So, who won that, Ricky? I don't know. I don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> right, we got some we got some questions to get to now. I've only got uh, I, you've got quite a few over there, haven't you, Reggie? So, yeah, I've got a few. Yeah. Do you wanna Do you wanna kick us off? I got the first questions for you, Rob, and it come from uh, my my dad. And he said, what's the most amount of bu- abuse you've ever copped on a cricket field? He well, said, was, was it Bridgewater in the national knockout down at Bath CC? No. <laughs> no, it wasn't, but that was bad. Because they sang you a song, didn't they? Do you want me to do uh, a little rendition of it? Yeah, well, I mean, if you want to hear all about that, listen to episode two of National Knockout Classics. Okay. Uh, donate to minds.org. Just giving. Um, uh, yeah, basically... That day was bad because we played Bridgewater on the Saturday in the league, and then we played them on the Sunday in the national. And on the Saturday, um, I got given out um, first ball, leaving a straight one that swung back and hit me on the kneecap. And I sort of, <laughs> I got given out and sort of like had to be like hobbled, like hobbled off. <laughs> Did you clap him? And then the next day, <laughs> we played him in the national. I um, I went out to bat. And um, this two days after I had my contract terminated by Somerset. And so I've, I've had my contract terminated. I've just got a duck. And then I'm playing the same team. And in the next game, first ball, bear in mind I'm opening both these games. First ball, same bowler, same dismissal. <laughs> and as I walked off, all the water supporters was, sort of came over and gathered by like their the sort of stairs. The, they were on the pitch, weren't they? They were on the pitch. Yeah, and they were singing "Where's Your Contract Gone," which was, <laughs> yeah, that was that was rough. Um, <laughs> the worst one ever. So um, all all the time I, I was playing for Bath, we used to have different people that were like um, sort of rivals, if you like. But for most of it, it was always Foster, and they had a guy called Nick Trainer. He was like this big uh, this big South African guy who played a bit of cricket for Gloucester. Um, Very ginger. And, very ginger um and became their club pro and he was wow oh, he, he, he was a prick so let's just <laughs> let's, hey, oh, yeah, 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 oh, yeah 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 and um <laughs> and we used to as well, every, every week you know every every season and then we were playing a t20 game and it was like in the national t20 and in the same way that Froome approached the national t20 that's how we used to approach it so we <laughs> turn up mixture of like twos and threes with a couple of first teamers thrown in and the first teamers would always be like hung over and we turned up to play Froster and they were living for it I mean they were absolutely buzzing for this game. I played this game they, they had coloured kit and everything they had all the coloured kit and yeah, stuff yeah, yeah. But this this was this was at Bristol we were like three at Bristol and we were in white and whatever and anyway they, <laughs> they had, Paul Mitchell was opening the bowling and um and he came in and he bowled me a flat one and I sort of like gloved it off my face. And he sort of came down, he picked the ball up and he gave me a stare. And then he just walked back and I went, I went, Muchy. And he didn't turn around. Muchy. And he didn't turn around. And I, I looked over at the umpire and I was like, is that, right? is that a no ball? And he was like, oh yeah. And put his arm out and said, well, is he not going to say, I'm going to say sorry? Before I knew it, Nick Crane had run up from slip and he's standing right in my face. And I've already sworn, so I'm, I'm going to disclaimer. Um, yeah. he, go, he goes, um, Letty, just fucking bat, or I'll fucking bat you. What did you say like, to that? Well, I was like, what are you on about? And then just screamed <laughs> in my face. He said, he said, you're a cunt now. 
Oh, good God. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't think I've had any worse than that. It's got five episodes, but I just thought once once I score once, I may as well just... Well, this is this episode's gone, and let's, we just yeah. want to have a free-for-all there. Uh-huh. <laughs> what about what about what about Jim and Potts? Have you you ever caught much abuse on the on a cricket pitch? Oh, uh, when I had to I had to get glasses around the time the first Harry Potter movie came out. <laughs> <laughs> it was just, it was, and like I, I, I don't know much about the North East, but it, it's like. It's like all 11 of the opposition sort of realised the connection at like five minutes after it, like the previous one did. Like, so it was like every yeah. over, like, uh-huh. oh, like, like, it's called Potty, where, let's say, Harry, uh, um, just 11 people sort of coming to the realisation that someone with Potter's wearing glasses, let's call him Harry Potter, one after the other. <laughs> oh, I love it. Never gotten That's funny so... that either. Four years up there. <laughs> There was a new bloody film out every other year as well. Which, <laughs> yeah, that got most bad men. Hey, at least you got your fancy dress outfit sorted, didn't you? Know, yeah. <laughs> right, what's the next question? My next question? Okay. If you had to go out on a day trip with Eve or... Actually, no, let me, let me refer. Who would you rather go on a day trip with? Ian Buchanan... Or Nathan Barnard. <laughs> Who's the question? Oh. All What's three the of day you. Trip? What's the day um, trip? I'm saying we're looking at um, Western Supermare on the pier, <laughs> go karts, ice cream, and probably a double cheeseburger with boogies involved. <laughs> um, I go okay, boogie. Yeah, I, I, the thing is, I'm I'm quite I'm quite a competitive sort of guy, so. I mean, if we're if we're talking go karts, I'm I'm gonna beat Buki, aren't I? I mean, he's gonna need a very very strong engine to get that. Mm, yeah. um, and I feel like Nathan Barnard would sort of distract me with some wizardry and trickery before I knew it. If he ran the outside, um, what, would you clap him? Yeah, I think so. If it was a if it was a good manoeuvre, yeah, yeah, yeah. so <laughs> <laughs> I would what? I would say I would say I'd rather go on a day trip with. Um, with Nathan Barnard. Nice. Jimmer? Yeah, I'll go boogie, mate. I, I like a burger myself. <laughs> I mean, uh, we could double up. You like you like him a bit bigger, don't you? A bit chubby. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they get on with each other, boogie and Matt. Oh, that'd be a good nature. I wouldn't nature, give a shit, mate. Oh. I reckon they'd get on like a house on fire. A three up. A cricket, don't they? Boogie. Oh, yeah. Nath and Brad House would have the best time. Oh, <laughs> what a three up. <laughs> right. right, I've got one. I got one from um, from Josh. Um, and he says uh, a little segue, obviously, with Nets kind of reopening partially. Um, he was asking each of us who would we most like to have a one to one net with? anyone could be anyone anyone so yeah I, I think he's probably thinking like uh, in terms of sort of famous famous cricketers maybe or or local I suppose hmm uh, uh, I'll, I'll be honest I I, I, okay, I want to unravel the mystery that is Robbie Midcalf so <laughs> <laughs> so I mean I, I don't care if like it doesn't do anything my technique or anything. I, I want to know what we missed out on. So, Pots, um, when you say mid calf, how how are you spelling that? Um, it's quite you hard know. to do on the podcast, <laughs> mate. So, <laughs> <laughs> touch your calf, touch your calf. <laughs> Jim, what about you, mate? Yeah, I'd go for tappers, mate. Little tough nut. Yeah, whack tough kick nut. falls down at me. Let's go on the piss. Have a fag as well. Yeah. Uh, what about you, uh, Reg? Oh, I'd go for Big Fred Flint off, I think. Big <laughs> Fred? Would you battle yeah. Barton, mate? Uh, Let me tell you now, mate. Then would he? would be absolutely terrified. Uh, He'd be batting behind the stumps. If the save, if the save can bounce you, mate, you got no chance against Fred. Yeah, Freddie would, Freddie would scare you, mate. I think. 
How would you have handled this over the ponding and the ashes, Reg? What would you have tried to do with that? Well, I think I'd have left that one alone, that one he nicked. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. Would you have given it the walk like you did at um, Middlezoy that, that time? <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, why not? Fuck it. I don't mind the that. By the way, if anyone wants a really good read, if you type in to Google search <laughs> no, 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 no. Broom <laughs> versus Middle Soy, <laughs> <laughs> Battle for Weffle, I think is something, it is a uh, crappy read. Um, I think I remember that. That's a lot. Um, Pour yourself a glass of wine. Yeah, that's a good one. Is that, that where you thought you were on 20? Sorry, mate, you're just cutting out there. You still there? Was that where uh, he thought you were on like 20 grand or something? 25, I think, mate, was the. 25 grand. That story we went around the league and it sort of unraveled a little bit when I turned up in a 25 year old Volvo V70 with 210 pounds <laughs> on the clock. What was your spell like that day, Rich? Pardon? What was your spell like that day? Um, <laughs> I was very red in the face, I think the reporter said. <laughs> I'd had too many donuts at tea. <laughs> even though we batted seconds, so I didn't even make fucking sense. <laughs> the wankers. <laughs> I bet he wrote that as well. Sad. He's got, he's got a bit of Have you got another question for us, Reese? Yep. <laughs> Is Elton John's song, Rocket Man, really about Luke to save? <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, is that anonymous? Who, who's that come from? That's come from Sam C. Sam C. Um, yeah, so I, I can clear this one up because. Um, <laughs> can you sing us some? Uh, no, but oh. what happened was uh, I sort of had heard about like the myth of Luke to say. Uh, obviously, like when, when you play league cricket, sort of rumours swirl and, you know, kind of word was that, that uh, Wellington had this guy who bowled fast and the speed of light, you know, quickest bowler that Weapon Somerset had ever seen. And I just, I didn't believe it until I saw it in action. And I mean, honestly, I've never been so scared facing a bowler. I was kind of standing out. I was just hoping that he'd bowl me so I didn't have to face another ball. Um, and I just thought, you know what, I've never seen anyone bowl that fast. And what would be a good, good nickname? Um, and I thought um, sort of Lightning Bolt would be a, a good one. That was a good song. But yeah, well, yeah. He just bowls rockets. He just bowls rockets. So, Sam, I've got to say, no, it wasn't after Luke today. But I think I think we can all agree that it's, it's, it's pretty fitting. Thanks for clearing that up, Robin. <laughs> Next. <laughs> uh, this is a question for you all. <laughs> Out of the whole of the club, who has the biggest schlid? Ooh, Sam Crofer. God, I mean, <laughs> surely... If there's a worse lid than Sam Croker's, <laughs> maybe oh. we can come up with something better. Oh, um, by the way, uh, you, this is you can all laugh if you're in T-shirt and Sons right now listening to this over the speakers. You all know <laughs> what I'm talking about. Anyone else got anything to um, to go by? What 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 is a schlid? It's a uh, it's a uh, shit lid. A shit lid, mate. Like a shit haircut. Really bad. Uh, oh, you got to whack Josh in that bracket. Oh, yeah. 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 It's pretty bad. I've got a couple more questions as well. Wait, what about Smithy? What about Smithy? There's no lead there. Yeah, he's, there's yeah. not a lot there. I think he does quite well with that. So, I reckon, give it two yeah. years, it would just grow the sides, and then, like, on a windy day, it would be, like, flapping around on top like that. And I reckon <laughs> he's going to comb it straight over. Bobby uh, Charlton. Good luck. Yeah. Does, um, does George Patson count? Is he still... I think he's um I think he's interrailing somewhere. Have you heard of <laughs> have you heard of Europe? Yeah, the man in his <laughs> yeah, dog. Yeah, he passed through Madrid, Paris, Rome around nah. <laughs> <laughs> no. yeah, bad lid. I've got some more. I got some more. This one's for you, Lay. This is gold. <laughs> if anyone's still listening, well fair play. <laughs> I got I got told by Page B from Stoke. I'm guessing that's up north. Saying, ask Robin if he'd only like to eat wild garlic for the rest of his life or never again. Ooh. Uh, 
this might seem a little bit of a strange question out of context, but um, if you live in the countryside, you should know that wild garlic season, sort of May, uh, March until May, just, you know, you pick, pick the leaves, a bit of Parmesan oil, a few pine nuts, grind it up, make it a pesto. And, uh, you know, there's nothing better than going out <laughs> foraging. Uh, you know, God's kitchen. Um, I would have to say, if it was a toss-up between eating it every day for the rest of my life, <laughs> never again, I'd, I'd probably begrudgingly have to go um, never again. Thank, thanks, Paige, for the question. Would you, would you put the lasagna, mate? Uh, I'm, I'm, let's not talk about it. We've done lasagna, okay? We've done the lasagna back in episode two, Ricky. All right. The creme fresh. Just leave lasagna. I'll never I've got tea again as long as I live. Although, I'm... thinking about it, if I did do a wild garlic pesto, I'd be able to stay under budget, wouldn't I? Yeah. And it's vegetarian. Mm. Right. I've got I've got another one from Freddie C from um oh. from Stoke. And uh, this one is aimed at all of you. If you could be any Avenger, which one would it be? Ooh. Well, oh, I'm um, I'm I'm 33 years old, so I don't I don't watch movies about comic book characters, mate. So I'm okay. okay. Well, I'm nearly 30, and I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's got to be Iron Man, and it? he's pretty sick. Yeah, I reckon he's proud of yeah, his he's, in his time as well. Yeah, he's got a lot of money too. Yeah, that's it. Not what he wants. Ricky? And I'll say the same as Jim Rowling. I'm sorry, mate, I don't really watch it either. I've got another. I've got a good Iron Man is pretty cool, though. i got Brad, one for you. Brad, got Brad one. House is a bit of a superhero. I suppose if I if oh, I had man. to choose to be to be one, I'd, I'd probably say I'd probably say him. Oh. Now we've moved. Reg, can I ask Potts the question? Because we've gone on to superheroes. Hang on. I've got one more question for Potts, and then you saw yours, Jimmy. That's all yeah. my questions done. This one's for you, Potts. Would you rather have every game of cricket spoiled for you before you watch it, or would not be able to watch a new game until it's been a year? Well, could you ask that again? <laughs> <laughs> would you? <laughs> I'm reading this. Would you rather have? Please, would you rather have every game of cricket? spoiled for you so before you watch it so you know what happens right. or would you n- not be able to watch another game of cricket again for a whole year what would you prefer um so i'm still trying to work out what you're actually asking me um, oh let's just move on <laughs> you've ruined it you've ruined it he was, he was that question fuck me <laughs> Jesus! Um, all right, listen. I've got, I've got, I've got one more. I've, I've got, got a question. More to go. One more question. Oh, I've got it. Yeah, I, I wouldn't want this spoiled, mate. I, I wouldn't watch, I wouldn't watch for you. No. Jim, and this is the last that. question in the mailbag for episode five, and it's from. I want to ask a question. It's from Acer. Okay. Uh, so he says, um, "Do you prefer the seriousness?" And quality of playing for the first team, or the laughing, joking, and drinking, playing for the pub team. Um, I don't know, mate. To be honest, I, I quite enjoy all of it. I'm a bit of a sad fucker when it comes to cricket. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> if I'm honest, <laughs> I played a pub game once. And I got caught at first slip by Callum Helmer was bowling. <laughs> <laughs> and these things don't really happen in the first team. <laughs> I don't know, mate. We've seen some pretty bad stuff. Oh, mate, it was a good ball, mine. It was pretty quick. Swung away, nipped off the seam. Yeah. <laughs> was he bowling with an egg? <laughs> yeah, that was a bad thing. That was, he was bowling with a wimble. <laughs> well I know that I know that Callum listens to this podcast so maybe Callum could uh, tweet the show and just tell us exactly how he got Jim around I'm sure we'd like to hear that story I'm sure he'd love to Callum just enjoy clear it up for us then uh, tweet, tweet into the show and let us know how you got him out can mm. I ask my question now go on you have to speak up though, can't me. 
Right. I was at work the other night and thinking, <laughs> like, oh. Pops, say you were just like bumbling about. Yeah. And all of a sudden, a tiger jumped out. Right. It's about to attack you. All you got on you on you is a knife, a shoelace, and Batman's cape. What would you use to defend yourself? <laughs> what do you do at work, mate? <laughs> <laughs> he lays cones out and then presses a button on a traffic light. I was, I was just so, thinking. T- Tiger, what are my options? You got a knife, a shoelace, or Batman's cape. <laughs> I don't. I we don't need that much any of them, mate. To be honest, um, we, we can't ask people to donate for this. This is <laughs> <laughs> too much of a stretch. I think we should give our money back. <laughs> um, oh, I think I go for the cape and hope for the best, mate. I think. Play well, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what I do as well, mate. That's where yeah, I come to that conclusion. Oh. I don't think it's going to be Right, that's it. We're gonna we're gonna have to leave it there, I think. <laughs> right. Um, well, it's been it's been an interesting show. Um, I think we'll say goodbye to our guests first, Reggie, and then we'll we'll wrap it yeah. up. So, um, first of all, uh, James Unwin, it's been extremely entertaining, mate. Um, and uh, thanks for coming on the show, and hopefully we'll um we'll catch up with you with you soon, mate. Can't wait, mate. Well, I'm Cheers, buddy. And uh, obviously, Ricky, vice chairman. Um, nice to have you on for your second appearance. I'd have thought, uh, I'd have thought they'd have been bored of you after the first week, but you know, here you are. Um, would you come on the show again if if required? <laughs> if, um, if if we get asked to do another one, then I would I would consider it and. <laughs> <laughs> Depends, on, depends how this turns out on the edit, mate. I think is the answer yeah. to that. Yeah, I'll tell you. I'll tell you how the edit edit will go, mate. It'll be me pressing upload, and that'll be about it. Um, <laughs> no, Ricky, thanks for coming on, mate. We'll catch up with you soon. Well, Bye, Reggie. Cheers, Cheers, mate. Well, Reggie, that was that's loose, fun. Mate. I mean, we can't stretch this out for another week, can we? <laughs> it's I don't know. Got- if they want to hear it, man, we we got to keep producing. Well, I think, what, um, was I not meant to hang up? Jimmer, like, right? You know, well, I've just, I, well, I don't know, I don't know what, uh, I, I don't know where we go from here, mate. The wheels are falling no. off. <laughs> Oh. All right. We've listen. had such a good show last week. Colin telling us all those stories, man. It's gone. It's no, gone. It's, it's gone. It's gone. Um, well, look, I'll t- I tell you what we'll do. At the moment, we're at £2,585. Um, yeah. What we're going to ask for this week is that um, everyone who's listening to this episode, we're going to ask that, seeing as it's five weeks down, we've, we've not been down the club at all whether you're a player, supporter, or whatever it might be, if you could maybe find a way to donate 50% of what you might have spent down the club this Saturday coming up. Bear in mind the sun's out, um, you know, and uh, everything will be sort of shining. I'm sure the cider would taste nice and cold. Mm -hmm. Um, Players, spectators, um, it would mean a huge amount to us. One last push. If we can get to 3,000, um, we'll, uh, we'll 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 figure out some some way of doing something else. We'll, we'll pull a special out of the hat <laughs> <laughs> from somewhere. Right. Okay. Time to wrap it up. Um, we may or may not be back, Reggie. But um, yeah. Ah, we just didn't have one on us. <laughs> fuck. Fuck it. Mm. All right. Um, Thanks a lot for joining us again, and uh, yeah, have a have a great weekend, and we will we will catch up with you again soon. What well I'm.